my topic today that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is I've been sharing testimonies, right? About what God has been doing, what God has done. I've been going like back in the past, but I'm telling you, God still is doing things. Okay. But sometimes it's like, I've had, I've had so many things that has happened in my life in the past that I said to myself, I used to just write them out, you know, just to remember like something you just don't want to forget the goodness of God. And then, um, I thought to myself, maybe I should just share some of these. And I'm sure everybody has a testimony about what God has done. Sometimes, it, you know, God God comes in, in in the midst of a situation and he works some stuff out for you. And then we might go around and be glad in the moment that it's it, it's fixed. But what about just remembering and giving God thanks for, for what he's done? It's And don't take it for granted. You know what I mean? So the other day I was... Um, I was walking on the street and I was having a conversation with God. I tend to do that a lot. Like, I mean, that's how I do most of my praying, to be honest with you, is just having a conversation with God. Because um, over my life, I think I shared my testimony before. Um, those of you who don't know my YouTube, YouTube channel, if you search for me, it's just Jacqueline Thomas. And you're going to find me on there with some, some, um, some testimonies that I've shared. And I had, I had, or you can search, I think I have Jet, Jet, J-E-T-T -T, and Jacqueline Thomas. Okay. So if you search that, you'll be able to find me. So I actually, <laughs> there are things that God has done in my life that, you know, I have not yet told anybody about. And then there are things that I have shared already. And sometimes, um, I'm trying to remember what I was about to say anyways, it slipped me. But anyways, it was something to do with one of the video that I uh, made. But in any events, what I was trying to say is that I tend to talk to God on a, on a daily, like having conversations. Because in one of my videos, I shared with you guys how I went through a period of time in my life when I was very... It's almost like I was going through, well, not almost, I was depressed, okay? I was going through depression. And part of my depression was an attack of the enemy simply because I was trying so hard to be holy, you know, trying so hard to be righteous. And using, I believe, self-effort, a lot of it was self-effort, thinking that I had to do this and I had to do this right and that right in order for God to really care for me and to really love me and for me to make heaven it really means I had to do this and do that and do that. And that's wonderful, but that's a training that we've received in the church, which I believe in a, uh, to a large extent is, is, is erroneous because it, it, it misleads people into thinking that it is their goodness and their righteousness that's going to make them um, get to heaven. And then we, we tend to trample on what Jesus Christ has done for us, like the goodness of God in our lives. And, and we're focused more in on what? Hi, Bo. Oh my God, my friend, long time. I love you so much. Let me just say hello to you. Um, yeah. So trying so hard to do right in your life. And what happened now was I was spending a lot of time, you know, praying and trying to do this right and trying to do that right to the point that I, I felt like I was being, I was being, um, accused by the enemy. And that's in one of the videos. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, so I kind of got to a point in my life where I literally, to be honest with you, I never told this testimony, but I actually stopped praying for about a year. When I say stop praying, I meant getting up and I have to be on my knee by this time in the morning, or I have to be at my knee at this time in the day, and I had to be on my knee. You know what I mean? Because I felt so guilty every time that I said, why am I putting myself through this? And I almost, I just stopped. I stopped, I literally stopped kneeling down. And I know this is going to sound strange to a lot of people because I felt like it was just so much me trying to do this thing right that I just decided to leave me up to God to allow God to have his perfect work in my life and I said Lord I'm gonna have conversations conversations with you I'm gonna just I want to just have fellowship with the Lord where I can just just walk and talk with him you know we sing these songs hand in hand we walk each day and you know we, we walk in hand in hand with Jesus but are we really walking hand in hand with Jesus you know like I would walk with my friend and hold hands and we can talk about this and talk about that you know while while i'm saying this to you I, you can interject and say oh did you see that thing over there and then the conversation keeps flowing do you think we can have that kind of fellowship with god or is god so far removed from us that he's just somewhere out there and we have to talk to him with this kind of um tone you know that reflects that this is like well you know i believe i can have a fellowship with god like a human a human fellowship with god where he and i walk and talk the bible says that god looked at abraham and says he's my friend 
He's my friend. I believe that I can walk and talk with God and be a friend of God. The Bible tells us about um, another gentleman by the name of uh, Enoch. And Enoch had such a perfect relationship with God that the Bible says at one point, God just took him. The man didn't even get a chance to die. Okay. God took him because he was so much in relationship with God. The Bible says it this way. And Enoch Enoch walked with God and he was not because God took him. God just be like, yo, I'm keeping this one for myself. I'm taking this brother home with me. So one day Enoch was there. Next day Enoch was not there. Okay. Enoch didn't die. Enoch got raptured away and rapture hasn't come yet. Let me tell you something. You can have such a relationship with God that you are raptured in the spirit. When I'm talking about so things of this life here that happens can get to the place where they don't even, they don't even affect you. You're not, you're, you, 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 you know how to live above the world, how to live above your, um, your circumstances, how to live above the pressures of life. That's called, that's when you get that fellowship with God. So anyways, all that to say that I said to myself, I want to have that. I want to have that fellowship with God. Now, did I achieve that? I'm not sure. Okay. All I know is that I got to a place where I felt comfortable enough that if I get up in the morning and I had to get out of the door, I get myself ready and I get out of the door. But guess what? That half an hour walk to work, me and God, we're having a good talk. We're talking. We're having conversations about this, conversations about that. I'm telling God things and I'm talking to him. So all of what I'm saying now is to lead up to what happened this week. Um, I, uh, not this week, but last week. And I'm telling you something. So I was walking and I was having a conversation with God. Um, you know, kind of just telling him about stuff that's been happening and stuff like that. And then the Lord, um, the Lord said to me, um, he says, fear not stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And now that's a scripture. Okay. That's a scripture, but that was a scripture that just come like that. Fear not stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And I said, okay. So then I said, but Lord, this is me having a conversation with God. Okay. And I said, oh my God. So Lord, so I said, so when you say fear not, I said, that's, that's, that's really faith, right? That's, you're telling me that I need to have faith, right? Because the opposite of faith, of fear is faith. So fear not, God is saying fear not, but literally what he's saying is have faith. Jacqueline, just have faith. You understand? And stand still. What does that mean? Does that mean I just just stand up in the road and not move? Does that mean that I don't do anything in my life? Um, I just stand up and let God do everything? No. And I said, well, Lord, so when you say stand still, what are you trying to say? And the Lord says, patience. I need you to have patience, Jacqueline. And... Okay, and, and then, and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord says that's vision. He says, I need you to be able, hallelujah. Oh my God. I need you to be able to look beyond your circumstances. I need you to be able to, to, to focus your vision in to see what I'm doing in your life. All right. That's awesome, God. And so I said, okay, so these three elements... These three elements are what I need in order to really walk up my, my, my walk with the Lord, have a good uh, walk with the Lord. Faith, patience, and vision. Important, right? And so I started to meditate now on the different, you know, scriptures uh, coming into my mind. And one of the scriptures that came into my mind was from Hebrews. And I have it, I wrote it down over here because Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 and it says, uh, faith without work, um, so, uh, sorry, it says, but faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him. So, so, so here now God is saying to us, listen, there are two things that I need you to believe about me. First, you need to believe that I am. God is. What does that mean? God exists. He really does exist. And not only does he exist, but he exists as God. Believe that he exists and that he exists as God. That's one. And secondly, that he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. Meaning what? That if you seek him, he's going to provide. He's going to do for you what it is that you're requesting. What it is that you're asking. Why? Because you're asking in faith. And the Bible says that if you ask him anything in faith, he will do it. He cannot go back on his word. Okay? So, 
faith, patience, vision. Now, James chapter 1 and verse verse 3, I believe it's about verse 2 to 4, uh, talks about they that wait, um, talks about let patience have its perfect work. Here's my phone trying to cop out on me. Let patience have its perfect work. Hold on, guys. Yeah, let... See, this is what I don't like about these new iPhones. You cannot actually plug it in and talk because now we can't put it to stand up. Is that crazy? So, let patience have its perfect work. Um, patience, when you, allow, when you allow patience in your life, patience, as I said, where God says, stand still. He doesn't say, don't move. Because if you read the scripture in Exodus chapter 14, God told them, in about verse 14, God said to Moses, tell the people to fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But in verse 15, he says, why are you crying to me, Moses? Speak unto the people, children of Israel and tell them to go forward. Okay, God, are you being contradictory in your speech or are you saying something to me here? Because how can you say stand still and then in the next breath you say go forward? It's because God is saying, when I tell you to stand still, I'm not saying do nothing. I'm not telling you to stop moving forward in your life. I'm telling you that while you're moving forward in your life, be patient. Let God have his, have his perfect work in you. Let the patience of God work its way through your life. Because God is fixing to do something for you. But sometimes God's timing is what's important. It's not your timing. So God wants you to let patience have its perfect work because patience will work some stuff out in you. It will bring out stuff, things that needs to be there. It will highlight it and bring it out, things that need to get out of you. God will take it out in time. You need to let patience have its perfect work and just keep on walking, keep on pressing on the upward way and to keep on shining in the, in the light of God. And uh, when it comes to vision... Proverbs 29 and verse 18 says, without a vision, the people perish. Now, if you can't see beyond your circumstance, if you're not able to see into, into the depths of what God is trying to do in your life, if you're only looking at the, your, 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 your little stuff that's happening around you and throwing yourself your pity parties, you will never be able to see the big picture of what God is fixing to do and what God is doing in your life. So he says, I need you to stop looking at your circumstance. See, the children of Israel, they were looking, the Bible says, they look ahead of them and they see that there was the Red Sea. And when they look behind them, there was the Egyptians coming at them, marching at them. And so they begin to fear and they said, Moses, what is this that have, you have done unto us? Why did you bring us out here into the wilderness? What? Were there not graves in Egypt? You brought us out here so that we can die in the wilderness? He said, didn't you hear what we told you when we were in Egypt? We told you, leave us alone. We will serve the Egyptians. And you brought us out here for them to come and kill us out here. God says, Moses, Moses start crying out to God. What must I do? God, God says, why are you crying to me? Speak to the people and tell them, go forward. I don't care what's going on around you. Stop looking at the enemy. Stop looking at, the, at your little stuff that's happening in your life. Stop focusing on the negative things in your life. Look ahead and see the big picture. See what God is doing in your life. Is there something that God has done for you recently that you can just give him thanks for? As opposed to focusing on the negative. Is there something that you can see that God has done in your life that you can just say, Lord, I thank you for that. You brought me through. You made a way in this circumstance. Thank you for that. I have a testimony. This week, uh, just this Sunday past, I was scheduled to work 16 hours. And I woke up in the morning and there was a song that the Lord gave me and I wrote the song. I, I, I write songs sometimes. So I wrote this song and I wrote it and I left it there. But then the Lord woke me up with the song in my spirit and I started to sing the song to the Lord in the morning hours before I got ready to go to work. And as I was singing the song, I was crying and I was worshiping God and I was singing, but it was like I needed to feel um, covered in the presence of the Lord that morning. I didn't understand it. But I, I felt like I needed to cocoon myself in God and, and I needed him to, to hide me and to cover me. 
And the song says, the song, there's a part of my song that says, um, though mountains move and valleys part, though lions roar and, um, troubles come tumbling down on me yet my heart rejoices why should i fear weapons form but they just can't succeed you are my hiding place god you are my hiding place and i was singing that song and i said god cover me this morning i i feel that i need you to cover me and i covered myself like this in the bed and i said god cover me cover me cover me god i don't know what i'm about to face but cover me I got to work that day and I tell you all hell broke loose. I and I it was like first of all there was I felt there were people who were supposed to be there were not there. I was working and I was working with somebody who was not even initiated so I'm not even supposed to be training nobody here. I'm I I I am having to be trying to tell this person what to do and I'm doing my best doing everything. And I overheard somebody saying some negative things about me. And when I heard that my spirit broke. And I said, my God, I said, please tell me they didn't just say that. Please tell me they weren't just saying that about me. And I just kept on moving. But at the same time, my spirit, I felt it in my heart. And I said, mm -mm, no, I will not tolerate this. I went to the office of the manager and I said, listen here, this is what I overheard. And I said, you guys pull out your videos and watch and see my movements around here. You tell me, you tell me if you think what they said was true. And she says, Jacqueline, I know you and I know how well you work and I know that you're doing your job. But she says, I'm going to investigate and find out who said it. And I said, I don't know who said it, but I heard it. They didn't know I was around the corner. I heard it, you know, and as I was, um, <laughs> as I, and, I, and that was what started. And for the rest of the day, it was like, I it was, I was under attack. I was under attack, but because the Lord, because the Lord, my God has already had already woken me up and covered me under the blood because I had woken up in that, in that morning. And the Lord made me worship with that song and say, Lord, hide me. You are my hiding place. God, I have found my hiding place. And so I was just sinking myself under that covering. Let me tell you something. This came in and interrupted that call. So anyways, um, <laughs> so I was like trying to recollect my thoughts. So pretty much that was it. I was like under attack, but I knew that God has had um, given me, like covered me in that morning. And then I, I went into the office and I talked to the lady and I remember saying to her, I said, I'm discouraged. You understand? I said, I'm discouraged because of what I heard. Because I said, I come here and I give 110%. And for me to hear something like that. But the words that I said out of my mouth, I'm discouraged. And when I came out of the office, I went to my phone and I opened my phone. And there was a message that was forwarded to me from my sister. And I began to listen to that message. And the message, the first thing the man was saying, he says, some, this, he says there's some stuff that will come upon you. It's called discouragement. And it comes to kill, to steal, to destroy, to take away all your joy. But you've got to keep on pressing in God. This man started to preach to my spirit. I turned the light off in that room and I just soaked it in. Because I realized that God, in the morning, he prepared me with a song to cover me. And then when the situation came, came and I got discouraged. The Lord had a word that was waiting for me in that moment to encourage me again. These are little things that we can look and see the goodness of God in our lives and know that God is working. God is working it out. He is fixing. He is making things okay. I want to encourage somebody today and I, I, <laughs> I want to encourage you. Your situation, trust me, when you weigh it, it's hard. It's heavy. It's hard, but God is able to do above and beyond everything that you ask or think. When you think you're sinking, just look out across the shore. There is Jesus. Hallelujah. He is walking on your water. He is walking on your water. He is there. And when you, when you feel like you're going under, he's going to reach down his hands and he's going to pull you up again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What he said to Peter, he says, if you believe that this is me, then come, come on to me. Sometimes we just got to step out in faith in God. So this is what the Lord has given me the word for today. Fear not. First of all, you're going to follow me, Jacqueline. You want me to be your God. You want me to lead your life. He says, fear not. 
It means you gotta have faith. Secondly, I need you to be patient, Jacqueline. I know sometimes things are hard in your life. I know sometimes you don't know which direction to turn. I know you feel like things never work out in your favor. I know sometimes you feel alone and you feel discouraged, Jacqueline. I know sometimes you have to put out a good face and nobody seems to understand you. Nobody seems to know you. But Jacqueline, be patient because I'm working some stuff out in you. I am actually working some stuff out. It's been a long road. It's been, it's been a hard road sometimes, but I don't want you to stop because I need you to go forward regardless of the situation. I need you to press forward. But in the meantime, while yet moving forward, Jacqueline, I need you to be patient. Sometimes we want it done right now, but God says, stand still, hold your horses, hold your peace and let God fight your battles. He's working some stuff out in your life. I know that I'm not the only one that feels this way sometimes. I know it. We can walk around with a smile because, you know, we have been trained. We've been trained to put out that good side and that good face. But sometimes if you see the heart, the heart, you have to understand that it's not every time you're going to walk out feeling like you're on cloud nine. But even in the valley, the, the writer says he restores my soul. God knows how to restore your soul in the valley, beloved ones. He knows how to turn your circumstance around, how to lift you up out of your dark situation. And then finally, he says, I need you to have vision. I need you to be able to visualize me working in your situation. I need you to be able to see beyond your circumstances. And I need you to look and to see. L David says it this way. I will look unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? Because what? My help comes from the Lord. That is where I'm going to put my vision. I'm going to look unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? Because my help comes from the Lord. Do we believe it today that no weapon that is formed against us can prosper? No weapon, regardless, they may form and they will form, but they will not prosper. Because I was reading it today and the Bible says it, he's, God says they, they, they will form, the weapons will form against you. They will, they will come against you, but not by me, not by me. I'm not the one who, who, who send them. I'm not the one who tell them to do this, not by me, but anybody who dare to come up against you and form a weapon against you. The Bible says you will condemn them every tongue that rises in judgment against you. You shall condemn. It means that the power is in your hand. The power is in your mouth that you will be able to declare a word and you will condemn that tongue and you will be able to speak a word of life over your own situation. Don't let people kill your visions and kill your dreams and you just sit back and do nothing. The power of your tongue, you use that and to eradicate the negativity that they've said and speak a word of life over your own situation. God bless you guys. I hope you are empowered and encouraged by this message today. It is, I call it a message, but anyway, it's just me wanting to talk to you. I am just hyper when it comes to talking about the word of God. I love the Lord. I love the Lord and I love the word of God and I love to, to to, to encourage people in the Lord. And so, you know, when I get to heaven, and I know I will, I know I will, trust me, I didn't save myself. I got saved because Jesus Christ saved me. And if he saved me, him can't lose me. Let me tell you that. I him rescue me and me not going away. I am here to stay. I am here to stay because it is him that is keeping me. You understand? I am not the one keeping myself. Let us not fool ourselves beloved ones and think that oh well it's because of my good works and my I, I really need to get into those kind of stuff talking about your works can't save you you understand your works will never save you but when you know the God in whom you believe when you trust in the living God and you know how to lean upon him you understand? He can carry you on his big, broad shoulders. He has broad shoulders. And trust me, if you need to cry, lean on that shoulder. And if you need somebody to carry you, him can carry you too because his shoulders are broad and he's a strong God. God bless you guys and you stay focused in the Lord. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all with all my heart. And I just, um, yeah, can't wait to come back to Montreal and see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> God bless. Bye. Mwah.